The fall of 1968 was busy at DePauw with the opening of a new women's dorm, Hogate Hall, an old gold concert by Stan Getz, and it was a presidential election year. At a time when the local bar had a soft drink sign and call waiting was still several years away, Bowman Jim received an important delivery from the postman. A message for Tom Mont and his coaching staff, postmarked November 5th, read, Don't worry about Indiana State, that game doesn't count. Get ready for Wabash. They beat you 7-0 last year because you wasted time preparing for Indiana State. It added ominously, Don't forget your job depends on beating Wabash. It was signed a very influential alumnus with money. And there were other pressures. California's Fresno B, which had a listing of game day predictions, had DePaul, which was 5-3, winning 32-13. Eleven days later, with the all-time series tied, was the day of decision, and the guy they called The Pot was ready to take charge. Late in the first quarter, DePaul sophomore quarterback Roy Pottinger connected with Scott Ralston on a 19-yard pass. It set up a quarterback sneak a few plays later that gave the Tigers a 6-0 lead. With 11.33 left in quarter number two, Wabash signal caller Dave Knott found Steve Mihalko in the corner of the end zone, making it 7-6 home team. DePaul's John Sacramento made this 20-yard field goal before halftime, and the teams went to the locker room with the guys in black and gold leading 9-7. It became a five-point lead after Sacramento made a 34-yarder late in the third. The Little Giants were about to get the ball back late in the game when they were called for roughing the punter here. DePaul kept possession and made hay, sealing the contest when fullback Bill Holton plowed in from one yard out with 137 left to go. DePaul ran a record 88 offensive plays and held the ball for almost 41 minutes. Yes, influential alumnus, like the Postal Service, they delivered.